Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy Markiplier here. Fresh and fit, Sneeko, Andrew Tate, the whatever podcast. What do all these people have in common? Don't forget Rolo Tomasi. Well, at their peak, they embodied the Red Pill, a community of people focused on talking about what they claim are truths about the world that the average person doesn't want to acknowledge. And part of that problem is The Matrix, a group of people with institutions at their fingertips who can swiftly get rid of anyone who dares to spread that Red Pill. You take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Outside of the Matrix movies, I think the first time I remember hearing about the red pill was on 4chan. And before this modern, like, red pill movement, um, with all these, like, you know, more palatable Easter labs, which, believe it or not, Sneeko is relatively tame and palatable compared to what I'm talking about. Being red pilled was a term for alt writers to describe their awakening moment when they go from being normal and involved in normal politics to becoming alt right and discovering, well, a bunch of things I probably can't say on YouTube, but their beliefs aligned more closely with a certain niche political movement from the the 1930s in Germany than any other political ideology I can think of today. And for the longest time, that's what red pill meant to me. It basically meant swallowing a giant big red pill that says <laughs> that says racism on it, I guess. But over the last few years, the red pill was co-opted by none other than Andrew Tate. So my introduction to Andrew Tate was through an old interview he did on Dick Masterson's show a few years ago. I think three and a half years ago, maybe. And this is before he was really famous to any degree. So listen, guys, I was I was watching Andrew Tate before he blew up, okay? I was an og -er. I was an OG Matrix. I think the only thing people knew about him back then was that he made this tweet about Star Wars, which is actually really funny and, and true because Star Wars sucks. And then this thread where he explains his thoughts on how depression isn't real. And this one made a lot of people very angry because I think they just saw the headline on this and found it very abrasive. But I think his point, if you read the rest of this thread, is basically that like a lot of people find comfort and misery and depression, and it just kind of becomes an excuse for their poor life choices. And oftentimes medication is not the answer to your woes, which I basically agree with. And I think even Tate himself would agree that there is such a thing as clinical depression, but today we seem to put a lot of stock into, you know, diagnosis, and there's almost a celebration of mental illness in our culture, which is bad. And based on that, I found Tate to be a compelling dude at the time. Uh, on my first ever Twitter account, the first time I ever went truly viral, because I'm on my ninth account now, because I've been banned so many yeah. times, but on my first ever one, Cobra Tate, where I was verified, I said depression wasn't real, and it went in nuts. You can People Google hate Cobra that. Tate. Yeah. You can you can Google Cobra Tate depression isn't real. Mm -hmm. It's still all over the internet. And all uh, the A listers came after me. Everyone from Game of Thrones came after me. All the like, Captain America called me a dickhead. Everyone came after me. <laughs> and uh and, but my point was misunderstood. My point was very simple. Feeling depressed is real. Yeah. Being depressed is real. But the idea that depression, this disease that strikes from the sky, no matter how perfect your life is, and it gets in your brain no matter what and will destroy you, I don't believe in it. And, and, and when everyone got very offended by that, and I said, look, just very similar to what you said about naming, I said, if you don't believe in ghosts, you can't be haunted by a ghost. If I go to a haunted house and, and there's a bump in the night, I'm gonna think it's wind and I'm gonna go back to sleep. If I believe in ghosts, I'm gonna be running around the house scared, getting exorcist, looking for a ghost, panicking. But if you don't believe in ghosts, the bump in the night doesn't mean anything. And well, this is, that was my point. Cause I don't believe in clinical depression. When I'm sad, it, it never crosses my mind for a second I won't get better. Cause I don't believe in it. It's also so I, offensive. It it's offensive that people would try to affect your coping mechanisms for depression with their own, like they cannot let your mechanism for dealing with mental health exist because it interferes with theirs. That to yeah. me, that is the most, like if you say depression, yeah, really like, yes it is, yes it is. It's like, well, well Maybe he's saying that because that's how he deals with life. Well, Shut the yeah. This is well before this guy was super famous. So I, I kept tabs on him throughout the next few years. And honestly, I did think he would eventually become, you know, more popular, but definitely not to the extent where he's like the most searched person on the internet. That is absurd. But looking back in hindsight, it's not hard to see why he became as big as he did. In the years preceding Tate being famous, the internet had a lot of boring people on it. All of the political people and even just e-celebs in general look like real life soy jacks who were basically just telling men to be weak and submissive. And, and most of them didn't look like they were having fun. They were, they were boring people. They were super 
socially conscious, afraid to be canceled by saying the wrong thing or getting in a fight on Twitter. They were scared. And along comes this guy named Andrew Tate. Uh, he gets super famous and he doesn't have to rely on like this, this sort of current cultural paradigm of what's right or wrong. He just exists completely outside of that. And on top of that, Andrew Tate definitely doesn't look boring. I mean, he dresses like a Bond villain. He's tall, he's jacked. He's actually really funny and he lives like a cool life. He spends time on yachts and has all these expensive cars, a sick house. He parties with girls all the time, flies on private jets. Obviously, this guy's life is going to be more captivating to a young man than like H bomber guy's life. No hate, but you know, probably kind of boring. And on top of that, Tate gives people a bunch of advice that should be super basic. It should be stuff that everyone's dad tells them. If you actually listen to Tate's core advice, especially early on, uh, it's pretty simple and honestly very agreeable. He says everyone should work out. Everyone should work hard to have a good life. Pursue your passions. Drugs are bad. It's bad to numb your brain and fry your brain cells on substances that don't add anything to your life. This is all basic stuff that, you know, my dad told me. But I think a lot of guys today maybe don't listen to their fathers or they just have, you know, weak or, you know, underbearing fathers who don't give them a lot of advice. I don't really know but for some reason, a lot of people seem to be seeking solace in a new father figure in this, you know, bald dude from the internet. He plays the role of this boastful misogynist who smokes cigars and drives Lamborghinis, and that's his thing. And because of that, he's amassed an amazing amount of money. And he's done it by doing this character, this online persona, but then also says very wise things. He says ridiculous shit, mm -hmm. but also says really interesting things. He's a very smart guy. And I think to pretend as if everything Andrew's ever said is dumb or to pretend that there's no reason he's appealing to people is really silly. And I can see that there are intelligent young dudes on YouTube who make videos saying Tate changed their life. And these kids were not paid off. They genuinely feel like the advice they got from this dude's videos helped them a lot. And that's something I learned. It's more about kind of perseverance and consistency and staying on task with something that's difficult and knowing that there will be setbacks within the majority of things in life. And if you can learn that those setbacks are coming either way and just learn to kind of roll with the punches and, okay, so I'm not losing here, I'm just learning. You can just kind of roll with the punches, you take the information, you, and then you come back stronger. You come back with a new approach. You come back with a, with a new outlook, with something with a better way of thinking about that problem. And that information to me is just amazing because I now realize that I need to stick something through. I need to keep working with it to make sure that I succeed. I can take the hits, I can roll with the punches and just keep working on it. And if I keep moving forward, then eventually I'm going to see the results that I want to see. Now that being said, to be clear, Andrew Tate is probably a, a human trafficker. <laughs> Based on everything I've seen about the court case, about his associates, about the past lawsuits he's been involved in, the dude's absolutely a human trafficker, a, a career criminal, involved with organized crime, and overall a, a, just a major scumbag. Maybe not in the same way some people imagine where he's chaining girls to the inside of a truck and driving to Mexico, but regardless, he lies to chicks under the pretense of them being in a relationship with him. Once they're in Romania, he does everything he can to make sure they cannot leave. He signs them into predatory business contracts tracks. He takes more of their money than he needs to by lying to them and saying it's for taxes. And the way he makes his money through all of this is by having girls on webcam, OnlyFans, and Instagram. That's how this dude makes his money. And everything I just said is all stuff he said in his own words, by the way. This is not me like pulling this out of my ass. This is not me reading articles. He said all of this. Now, if you think there's nothing wrong with that, I guess that's another conversation. But bottom line, the Romanian government believes he broke the law. According to their laws, he broke the law and he's probably going to jail. I mean, some of the things this dude admitted to, like how he thought he would never be caught for stealing wages at the very, very least, is is horrible. And on top of that, the more recent news is that he apparently like tried to intimidate like a politician from jail to get out. The girls are like, what the f do you need this dude for? And they will leave if you don't have every aspect under control. Tax is also another important element for controlling your woman. You're not going to pay anybody tax because you're getting paid in Bitcoin. So you don't need to pay tax to anybody. That's not legal advice, by the way. You need to tell your girl that you're paying the tax because girls are lazy. And girls are stupid and girls don't understand how taxes work. So the girl's working with you and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, we've made this much money, but I'm going to pay the tax to make sure we don't get in trouble. She'll sit there and go, okay, okay. Now that allows you to do two things. One, it's another control element. See how that control is, is a recurring theme over and over and over again? I work with him. My tax is not a problem. If I do it alone, I have to deal with taxes. Taxes are complicated. It's a control element. And he doesn't have respect for these women at all because he thinks they're stupid. It allows you to pay her a smaller percentage. So I used to pay my girls 30%. So for every $10,000 they made, I'd give them three and I'd keep seven. 
They thought they were on 50%. And I said that the disparity is because of taxes. So you're on 50%, but we had to pay the tax first, and then it's 50-50. I mean, this is this is undeniable. Call it what you want. I think we're all in agreement he did some pretty sh things to make his money and probably will continue to do sh things that actively hurt people. And this is sort of the great contradiction of Andrew Tate and sort of like part of why he's so famous, honestly, and what made him hate it. He hates loose women. He hates girls who were ran through, yet he runs through girls. He gets them on webcam to show off their body and make money off of it and message simps. And that's just one among the probably 30 hypocrisies from his entire life story and, 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 and like system of ethics and morals. He hates simps and criticizes them. He says he wants to uplift young men while simultaneously the way he's made all of his money for his entire life is by putting young men down. He and Tristan have even done videos where they talk about draining dudes' bank accounts while pretending to be a webcam girl that they fall in love with. It's funny, it's really funny, but it's also really twisted. So unfortunately, pretty quickly Tate's ideology begins to fall apart if you think about it for more than 10 minutes. Thankfully, there were people incapable of thinking for more than 10 minutes, like Sneeko to come along and steal his swag. And he did exactly that. Okay, that's not exactly true. I don't think Sneeko's dumb. I think Sneeko is a, is a grifter. I think he's a liar. So a few years ago, Sneeko was this entertaining, introspective content creator who lived in New York City and made video essays about his life. He would delve into complex subjects with tact and thoughtfulness, and while he was not 100% a good person, I don't care. He, he did not need to be. I wasn't watching him because he was a good person. I wasn't I wasn't watching him for anything like that. I was watching him because he was an interesting person. People watched him to see his journey throughout life, okay? His, his channel felt like the diary of a young guy who's finding himself and using art to express those steps along the way, and if he was dishonest at some point, he would usually pretty quickly own up to it and talk about why he was dishonest and, like, analyze what about him, whether it be an insecurity or or some some like kind of greed or something led him to make that lie. And it was super good content. I really liked it. You're an empath, they them autistic, ADHD, POC with trauma and lactose. It's society's fault you suck. It's never you. You're different. Your friend Sneeko is recording this conversation. Can you tell him to stop recording him, please? Or else it's, it's gonna affect your face. <laughs> it's gonna affect his face too. You don't have a huge camera pointed at your phone. Like it's not funny at this point. It's not content for you to put on your YouTube. Like, can you delete that? The number one requested video I get is people asking, how do I be confident, Sneeko? The answer is the title. If you're not confident, you gotta fake it till you make it, All right, it's not aggressively corny. You dick. But I, I, might, I might listen to that. Then, all right, then what are you gonna do with all the footage that you shot? Which footage? The rest of the ice cream truck bullshit. What does that have anything to do with fake it till you make it? Well, you could think of it as like I'm faking out the viewers' expectations. Haha, <laughs> got him. <laughs> got him. Got him. Got him. Guess you could say I faked it till I made it. it. My god, this is corny. This is corny overall. They'll, they'll come on stage, get the microphone, and just hold it at their side and. That's the state of hip-hop now. People don't show up to hear good music. They come to see as many famous people packed in the one space as possible. It's all hype, rage, and money. Mosh pit! Open that shit up! Open that shit up! Open that shit up! Oh, damn, yo, play the song. Open that- I can't hear the song, bro! I was watching this dude for probably two years and I found his stuff really interesting. I didn't always agree with him, but I didn't have to and I liked that. And I think- I think everyone who watched him, you know, would, would probably be on board with me with that. And at the very least, he was trying. He was trying to make good, artsy, interesting content. And then there was this moment where Hassan Piker, okay, the greatest political mind of our generation, the greatest <laughs> jur j journalist, news mind, okay? Hassan reacted to one of Sneeko's videos and Hassan gave the most dumbass reaction of all time where he called Sneeko like a creepy cell while totally missing the point of everything he was saying almost on purpose. Um, it was genuinely one of the worst reactions of all time and to this day like this is one of Hassan's worst moments that I think people don't talk about enough. This guy is like addicted to being wrong but now his chat rewards him for it. You could have made a fire video with this and this dude is talented. He's good at like making videos like this and he obviously has no fear of like approaching people in public. The only problem is that like he's too much of a incel to like make a actually self-reflective and like funny video because he's too no i mean he did a really good f copy of how to like that's straight up the truth he did a really good copy of how to it's oh well, it's more cringe but whatever he is actually i mean this is a person who's doing this on his own you know what i mean he's like a 20 year old kid who's doing this all on his own like you're not doing anything like this as a, as a content creator myself like i see the value in what he could do okay but the, the unfortunate part about it is that, like, he is too heavily slanted on the incel side to, like, actually make, like, a funny, uh, 
actually make a funny joke about this. And I remember Sneeko saw this video and responded to it at the time. And I remember his shock at the fact that someone could be so wrong and so blatantly lie and yet be so much more successful than him. And I think that was the moment a light clicked in Sneeko's mind. So he starts streaming every day on a second channel, reacting to videos. And then suddenly he magically finds Andrew Tate. He feigns an initial disagreement and hate for him at the start and then slowly agrees with him more and more until the point that he's just meat riding Tate all the time and defending his every word and action and in denial about anything wrong that he's done. And the idea that this was a totally like sincere change in content is ridiculous to me, okay? Before Tate, Sneeko had explored red pill ideas and disagreed with them with reasoning. It wasn't like, you know, he was brainwashed by the woke mind virus. He knew what, what their arguments came down to and he just disagreed. But when it became convenient to believe what Andrew Tate believed, he cynically hopped on the bandwagon. And that's pretty much backed up by Sneeko himself based on his recent move away from the red pill content. IRO streaming is, is what I want to do now. Uh, this is, there's only so long, this, you can only do this for so long. Like how much can you really talk about Neon Data Coach? That's hilarious. Uh, but yeah, it's like, it, it's just so much more fun. I can't even lie. And let's be honest, the red pill is, uh, is dying. It's over. It's over because like, there was a lot of hype around this, like, oh, the matrix, bro, how do we make it out? And then like, you, you, there's this excitement, there's hype around it. And I got in at the right time, hit the wave at the right time. You know, I was, I was red pill raging when the red pill was blowing up. So it was perfect. You know, scream at a camera, wake up, wake up. And then now like, okay, you know, live life now. Can't be screaming at a camera about Satan every single day. We are going to talk about the transgender because the streaming awards is yesterday. I was watching this. this guy basically used the red pill while it was popular. He used the, the Muslim religion advantageously when he thought it would benefit him. Pretended to really believe in both of those things. And now he wants to go do IRL streams with Fousey and Aiden Ross and sleep with uh, OnlyFans girls and adult film stars. He played his audience, okay? He was, he was a fraud the whole time. And now he's ready to move on to the next thing. So with Tate doing less and less frequent content because of his trial and probably going to jail, and even toning down the language he uses and how extreme his opinions are while the trial is going on. And with Sneeko jumping shift now that it's no longer convenient. Who do we have left in this space truly? Well, Fresh and Fit are a podcast focused on life advice for young men. They're they're red pilled, but honestly, they come across like followers of the MGTOW movement from years back or men going their own way, if you guys remember that. I remember back in like 2014, 2015, I think one of the first people who had like a decent sized channel, or I think really 2015, late 2015, early 2016, one of the first people who had a decent sized channel to subscribe to me and like comment on my channel was some guy called like MGTOW, MGTOW 100 or something like that. That. He had like 30k subs and that was like one of the first channels that subbed to me. And then the MGTOW movement was like just kind of a joke for a while. Everyone thought it was a meme. And now it's like literally everything the red pill guys are saying. You know, they talk about a, a high value man and how to be one, how to be desired by women, how to be a high value woman who's desired by men. And over the last year or so, they've also delved into politics and free speech stuff. And there's no doubt that some of their content is straight fire, okay? They've been doing IRL streams with Destiny, John Zerka, Sneeko, Nick Fuentes, like a pretty insane lineup of people to have on one show. You're not getting this kind of content anywhere else on the internet, okay? You're certainly not getting it on, on Twitch. So I, I see why people like this stuff, right? But their podcast was also recently demonetized. We've suspended the Fresh and Fit channel from the YouTube partner program for repeated violations of our policies, including our advertiser-friendly guidelines and community guidelines, they said. Gaines is the author. This is this is Myron, by the way. Myron Gaines. I believe he's... Is he fit? I think he's fit. Myron Gaines is the author of the book, Why Women Deserve Less, which argues that modern women are unfairly benefiting from feminism at men's expense. It's a common theme on the podcast, which often features games gains and weeks shaming and objectifying a female guest. The podcast also recently hosted Nick Fuentes, Media Matters reported in which Fuentes called women baby machines because <laughs> that's what their that's what their brains are about, he said. Gaines announced the apparent end of Fresh and Fit in a live stream on Saturday. He told his followers he had sucky news and then he was shocked. Is this the end, bro? He asked Weeks. Because we got some bad news, man, Gaines said. The channel's been kicked off the YouTube Partner Program, membership of which lets creators monetize their audience and access special features. Weeks said the Super Chat feature, a way for viewers to donate, well, is no longer available. So basically, we're going to figure out what's going on because we don't really know all the details, Gaines said. We're working with YouTube to try to come to a middle ground and, you know, work together and figure this out. In the podcast, I said they hadn't been told why YouTube made a decision, but suggested it was because of the subjects they cover. Now, to be clear, I don't support their demonetization, nor do I support the deplatforming of Sneeko. I believe if their ideas are so bad, people should be able to argue them, okay, debate them, disagree with them without feeling the need to ask the hall monitors of YouTube to come in and get rid of them. That being said, I'm not really shocked they got demonetized considering they recently did a stream where Myron dressed up like a, a Hasidic Jew and talked about how he was going to ban Sneeko from Instagram and a whole, a whole litany of other comments and stuff, which is like, obviously you can't say that stuff on 
fucking YouTube, dude. And I think this outlines part of the problem with red pill stuff in general these days. It's become less about the ideology and the ideas and more about the shock value, which is why Fresh and Fit are hosting these giant panels with the biggest names possible, saying the craziest insults possible. And that's why Sneeko is now moving to IRL content and just collaborating with insane people like FusiTube, right? The red pill grift became more about saying the wildest thing, which could then go viral on TikTok and Instagram reels than helping young men, okay? It became getting your name out there and making making content, um, which is cool. Like it's it's cool to do that, but these guys came up on, on a whole mission to, to save the West and save young men. And now Sneeko's abandoned that because it's not, you know, really convenient for his career anymore. And now he gets to go hang out with Aiden Ross and Jake Paul. But at this point, how much more shocking could these dudes get before platforms start trying to own them? Apparently we've reached that point for fresh and fit. Sneeko reached it a while ago and that's when he was kicked off YouTube. So with Sneeko showing his true colors as someone who wants to just make money online and has no real conviction outside of that, with fresh and fit being demonetized and obviously Sneeko's on Rumble, uh, so he has limited discoverability outside of, you know, the streams he goes on with Andrew Tate going to jail and what's what's left is like the, the whatever podcast, which is like a new version of fresh and fit, but they're basically just bringing on random clout chasing women and calling them dumb for three hours. So actually it's exactly like fresh and fit. Five and 8.5. Probably a 6.5. I don't know, man. Lately, I've been feeling like a four. <laughs> to love yourself a little bit more, bitch. I'm a ten. I'm a ten through and through. Okay. And so are all of you. So, ten, and then all the other girls should be tens too. Why can't everyone feel like a ten? Everyone well, has flaws, though, so nobody's perfect. Yeah, Depends I didn't say it was perfect, but we're looking at a number scale now. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Okay, so I feel like it's based on results. Results. Yeah, yeah. Results. Outcomes. Well, what's what sort of results? Like, how many people am I fucking? How many guys am I getting to pay for my meals? How, how, what many, a, how many guys are you fucking? <gasps> I don't have enough fingers to count. Are you actually? But like, are you you currently seeing a couple guys? Or yeah, of course. How much? How much? Alex Alexander. I think right now I'm actively dating and talking to <laughs> like like seven guys, seven eight. <laughs> I don't like talk to all of them regularly. I don't see them regularly. Realistically, this stuff has, has a life cycle with how shallow the content is. People are going to get bored eventually and want to move on. And I think we're reaching that point, even outside of the fact that, you know, clearly the, the red pill thing for someone like Sneeko was just a stepping stone to get more famous. I think the, the saturation point in terms of like how big they can get doing the content they were doing had been reached. And I think the only way they can grow is, you know, honestly, if they just become shameless sellouts, which Sneeko is definitely doing to his credit, you know, he, he, he knows where the money is, I guess. Hard to say who will be next on the horizon considering the right wing just blew the freak up for a bit and considering that you know the the lefty dudes the the sock dem type you know desperate for voice guys have been sh on them for a while i would expect they're going to be the next big thing like culturally on youtube twitter and tiktok and I'm, I'm just going to say brace yourselves for the leftist cringe of the next few years okay brace yourselves everyone get your grape juice get your haterade put on the deft tones and put on your thinking caps things are about to get even darker okay it's going to be like a guy with the with the confidence and bravado of myron but he looks like i dubs and he sounds like he sounds like the the teacher that's like also a bird from jimmy neutron and he's talking about pronouns that's that's the that's the rabbit hole we're going down so just be prepared like the fresh and fit stuff the sneeko stuff was cringe on one side of the spectrum we're about to see the other side of the spectrum's cringe and um i don't know if it's gonna be better i don't know if it's gonna be worse but we're just gonna have to sit on the sidelines and observe it and uh watch the internet burn down once again over the next few years um so i guess let's just try to have some fun while we're here right thanks for watching bye and if you liked this video consider becoming a member for five dollars a month you get access to exclusive podcasts unreleased videos and the members only minecraft server thanks so much to all of my YouTube members who fund my content.